Don't waste your time listening to crappy headphones. You deserve better than what's in the box. With the Clarity HD headphones, listen your way, Bluetooth, analog, or digital. Find yours at PlugHitsLive.com slash monster. Hi guys, Scott here with Plug Hits Live, part of the Tech Podcast Network. I'm here with Jason and we're going to talk about Remix OS a little bit on this uh, machine behind us. Hi Scott, hello everybody, welcome to CES 2017. And Remix OS, uh, as you alluded to, is really a very basic concept. Everything you do on your phones, all the apps you're already used to and you use every day, combined with the productivity power of desktop PCs. Because really, 80% of the things you do every day on your uh, computers, you can actually do on your phone. But you always go back to your laptop and your desktop. Why? It's usually because of this guy, this guy, and a bigger screen to sometimes enjoy better content on, right? So that's the idea. It's, it's difficult to try and be productive on a small screen. You can try, but it'll probably take you a while, if, especially if that email uh, is longer than three sentences. So. I wrote an article on a cell phone one time, and I will never do it again. Well, congratulations. That sounds like a very, very uh, good experience for you. Yeah, because it taught me that that's not something that we should try. And this is probably why we built this for users like you. Exactly. We think like, hey, I really love the stuff I get on my phone, but I want to be able to also do other things too, sure. especially for that 20% remaining where you need to be productive and create content. Very cool. So. How exactly does this work? Is it, is it Android? Is it Linux? Sure. Is it where does it live? Well, I mean, Android is based on right. So I'm not going to repeat that. But it is something we've taken Android and added different features to. Uh, let's start, for example. So we always say Remix OS is Android PC. Um, and when you're talking about PC and productivity, this is something you have to be able to do, right? Earlier I got Scott to type in his name and really just use keyboard shortcuts that he was really familiar with and copy and paste or cut and paste from one side of the line to the other side of the line. And that was kind of cool. Uh, another thing you have to be able to do in, in a PC type environment is to open up different programs, right? Sure. So you have multiple resizable windows running. I got two right now, and I'm also going to open up my Slack group. So uh, previously I was showing off my uh, Teams communication, but it, we do need to kind of sign a mental NDA for it, so I put a Slack bot up here. So you got one, two, three apps running all at the same time, right. and uh, this is what we mean by being pro productive. Sometimes it's finishing your TV series that you're trying to uh, you know, watch uh, the end, to the end of. Sometimes it's communicating with your team and sometimes it's just really writing your work documents or getting your spreadsheets done. And when we put out this uh, operating system on a, our first box-like product, a lot of our users told us, hey, if you have an HDMI connection on the back, I'm going to connect it to a TV. So this year we also started working on the TV side of it so we can tailor it more for the user experience in the TV mode. And we created something like a TV mode. If you look at this and you look at what I have in my hand right here, this is a remote control. If you're leaning back on your couch after a long day's work, you're in your bed staring at the bedroom TV, sometimes you don't want to be typing away at a keyboard and you're just trying to use a remote. So we have recommended content from all the TV apps that you have downloaded. You can click into this and it'll open up the app and play the content for you. You can also sign into your accounts like Hulu and Sling TV and whatnot and uh, watch that content. But once your colleague says, hey, I still need that file, man, you can go back to your PC mode, finish up that file, email them from like a Gmail app and get your stuff done. This is what we envision as that merger between mobile and desktop and we believe this is the future of computing. So one of the things that I notice is that while it's Android, it still feels familiar in the desktop environment though a little altered, right? Like, so when a window was open, I, three buttons in the top right, a couple in the top left. Um, I assume uh, the top right are close, max, and min. Right, that's okay. right. And in the top left, that's probably a app-specific version of the back button in the that's system. Right. right, and this one right here is fit to screen. So oh. sometimes if you maximize and just force an app to maximize, it's gonna look terrible. Right. It's gonna be elongated and stretched out. Fit to screen means... Because it's kind of designed to be right. this way. A lot of Android apps are supposed to tilt. It's supposed to kind of move around, right? Sure. But fit to screen kind of acts more like, uh, I want to say there's an operating system out there with this feature, and it makes it just fit that screen ratio, whatever it was, right? And it doesn't make that app look contorted. 
Uh, something you said about that familiarity thing. I mean, think about the way you take from home to work, work to home. As you go and take this route every day, you actually don't think, should I turn left, should I turn right? What you're actually doing is thinking like, what should I cook tonight for dinner, right? Because your habits kick in in that environment. When you're in this environment, you're staring at a huge screen and it tells you PC because you got a keyboard and mouse, you want to be able to, your eyes will look down for a taskbar to manage what you're doing on that desktop, right? You're looking at a start menu or an app drawer in this case. And you're also looking at uh, quick settings right on the side. So this is our idea. We don't want to change your habits. We want to kind of leverage those habits and make it a lot easier for you. So that's the idea. Fantastic. And even like like we said, the uh, things are in the places that we n just naturally expect them to be. be no matter at this point, kind of no matter what the platform is, because you know, Android or uh, Mac OS, Windows. They're, they're actually very similar in, in concepts. You know, the Apple menus in the top left, the start menus in the bottom left. Okay, well, eh, whatever. Right. System trays at the bottom. It's all very familiar. You guys have kind of stuck with that. That's right, very much so. Um, another detail is like just resizing windows. And I think this is one of the key features that sometimes gets glossed over when we talk about our, uh, our operating system. Um, people go, well, I can do that on any desktop PC. This is Android. And so they the advantage of this isn't a desktop PC. This is Android. No, this is Android. So what you're taking advantage of is 2.6 plus million apps as of December 2016. So if you want to do something on a computer, there's probably an app for that, and there's probably an Android app for that. Right. And that's what we're trying to give back to the user on desktop because app developers nowadays develop for Android or mobile first. Right. That's that's the world we live in today. So. Yeah. So. Um, let, let's talk about performance sure. because, of course, that's an important thing when it comes to a sure. computer. So, what kind of hardware are we powering behind this? What is it intended for? Like, who is your target? Right. Uh, that's a great question. So, whatever you have here, and look at the size of your phone, right? I have a five inch screen phone right here. It's a very, very basic, vanilla, generic Android phone. You look at the sizes, they're pretty much the same sure. because. Mobile components nowadays are almost as powerful uh, as uh, PC components. I don't say more powerful, but as powerful. They take a look at saving resource and power to fit into a form factor without putting a fan in it. Right. Would you want a phone with a fan in it? Probably not, right? Probably but your not. PC has it because why? Uh, the Wintel solution says more power, but I'm going to also hog power, right? Um, so this is why we can keep this not only small and minimalistic, but also uh, a lot cheaper than your normal desktop PC. So for example, um, like uh, the last laptop I ever bought was about 500 US dollars. This guy, we were retailing at um, around 69.99 on our store. And so that brings down the cost. Um, another thing that really works out well in emerging markets is, and this is the story that kind of alludes to that previous story you told me about India, is um, for the power consumption, this, take, uh, this uses about 90% to 95% less power than your normal traditional desktop PC. So if you think about that, your energy bills go down, your productivity probably stays the same, and we think this is probably still, again, the future of computing even in emerging markets too. So you mentioned productivity, and so I'd like, I wanna say, when I was working with it a little while ago before we went on air, um, I was really impressed to see that some of the things that we're very familiar with in Windows, and maybe even things that we're not familiar with in Windows, but some of us are, right. you know, it's a very small subset, right. key commands and stuff like that, right. were available here, even though that's not actually Android. A lot of the things that make this seamless or easy to use, we spent hours, days, weeks, months, thinking through, researching, what are the most commonly used keyboard shortcuts that a Windows user would use, sure. as opposed to Mac users would use? We would think like think through that because we don't want a Windows user to come and go. Okay, I know I can do Control C, Control V, but what about Alt Tab? Oh, you don't have Alt Tab. Well, this really sucks. We wanted to make sure these people get satisfied. All right, all right. I mean, I might not be able to do like if there's like a ten key shortcut, <laughs> but I can do almost all my basic shortcuts. So we roughly have about. 20 of the most commonly used keyboard shortcuts in there. We want the user to go, wow, I mean, I couldn't believe Android could do that. That's why on the other side of this booth it says, I can't believe it's not Android, right? <laughs> because it is, right? So, and Including a, a key command that I just 
used instinctively when you had me move the text. Right. I just used it instinctively, assuming it would be there, forgetting it was Android, and it worked. And that's some of the wow factor that happens, especially when uh, you're a very technical person. When a layman such as myself, I only do like some marketing stuff. Um, when I come to this and I am able to do that on Android and you remind me, hey, it's still Android, I'm like, wait, whoa. And then that's the moment where a person kind of gets why we're trying to do this. We want to give you back productivity, but really leverage the uh, advantages that a mobile operating system and the mobile world gives you. Well, that's very cool. So, um, obviously, the device is on the market now. Well, this, we did a Kickstarter last year, raised almost $2 million. Uh, so this has been around, um, and we're also trying to get into a lot of uh, brick and mortar shops. Uh, so this is going to be coming to your shop. Uh, we also started working on some exciting new upgrades uh, on the hardware and did another Kickstarter as well. And that's probably coming a little bit later in this year, uh, available for retail. Um, so look out for that. It, this is the Remix Mini. And the uh, one coming up is going to be called the Remix IO. Very cool. Well, I look forward to seeing those on the market. And thanks for taking the time to talk Thank to you. us today. Thanks, Scott. For continuing CES 2017 coverage, stay tuned to PluggitsLive.com.